last week i took a red eye flight i know i know i never seem to learn from past experiences and this time i did a red eye with my daughter in tow being on a plane at odd hours is bad enough being on a plane at odd hours with a hungry child is worse just for some context this child had spent 6 hours hungry and she was looking at two more hours because guess what i had done i had forgotten to order dinner on the flight and here i was you know with a cranky child wondering what the hell do i do do i buy some nuts do i manage with juice honestly how is this going to even work out and i was practically staring at probably the worst two hours of my life in recent memory at which point in time neetu krishna the lead cabin crew member on that indigo plane decided that her sandwich and her hunger were not as important as the hunger of a child being in a service role one where you have to face hundreds of customers every single day is hard enough neetu must have spent the entire day on her feet and yet she willingly gave her entire meal away without so much as feeling sorry for herself what she did was an individual choice but after this experience i couldn't help but think hey i am always going to travel with indigo when we think of brand strategy we often wonder why do we need someone else to tell our stories why can't we know what they are for ourselves why the hell should i invest in a good brand strategy now i think that that's because a brand isn't something we build at all it's not built by the company a brand is how people consumers employees stakeholders investors perceive what we've already built welcome to the damn good marketing podcast today let's really dive deep into brand strategy what it is what it isn't but definitely why it really is step 1 towards building something great joining me today are madhav maheshwaran mahesh managing director stereo associates india and thomas cst strategy director stereo associates hi mahesh hi thomas hello hey chita thank you so much for being here today so i'm going to jump right in and ask you the big question first what really is brand strategy according to you it's a damn good question in a damn good podcast um <laughs> brand strategy uh to to us in in stereo is about uh defining a way uh forward for a brand uh understanding that um branding is is everything a particular sort of anything a, a particular brand or or business stands for in the eyes of a of its stakeholder so um so it's about giving direction to a particular brand uh according to sort of business plans and ambitions and uh, and 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 what have you um and brand strategy is therefore not just about sort of something consumer facing it's also about um getting tra- uh, sort of getting direction towards any stakeholder so those stakeholders might be your employees or coming employees it might be sort of the community that you are doing business in and and with whom you are dependent on so it's basically giving direction to a brand for uh, all its stakeholders in a sort of a multifaceted way sounds complicated but it's just about getting your thought to it and uh, and defining that brand that sometimes is found to be a little sort of elusive and uh, difficult to grasp but uh, but a brand strategy helps that it it gives it's a management tool for guiding the brand forward towards all stakeholders thank you thomas in fact yeah. i have a specific question on that and mahesh i would like to ask you so when you talk to clients about building the strategy behind their brand how do you explain to them uh, why they really need it so if you had to make an elevator pitch for brand strategy mahesh what would you say in, in my mind i mean one i wanted to add to thomas's uh, last point on brand sure. strategy i mean today brand strategy is going one step higher i mean one one notch higher in the sense that uh, the brand is your business or the business is your brand and today strategy brand strategy not only helps for the brand it also helps or it's kind of holistic towards the whole business as such and if i were to talk to a particular client about how important it was i mean it is kind of the fundamentals of how the world sees your brand 
And if you don't explore that, if you don't understand the brand yourself, how would you ever sell the brand to an outside world? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Sarah Blakely started Spanx with $5,000 and her famous red backpack. But when it came time to build the company's office, she moved tangentially away from the boring gray cubicles and she really built something that every employee would be proud to call their office. Often, we look at workplaces like these and think, people must be joining them for the free snacks after all. Maybe, but the real question is, why are they staying? They're staying because the brand's culture inspires creativity. It encourages free thinking. And that is the true potential of a great brand story. Thomas, I know this is one of your uh, pet peeves. I'm going to go right up and ask, is the purpose of brand strategy only to help marketing efforts or is there actually more to it? That's the thing. When talking about branding, some people see it as a sort of only a visual side, that it's something that is, um, again, only consumer facing, what you see. But um, brand strategy is actually a sort of a senior management tool. It's, uh, it's, it's board room level material because a brand strategy is not just about the marketing side. The marketing department should follow the brand strategy um, but, but not be the driver of it, in, in my view. They should be sort of perhaps the most prominent users of the brand strategy and a communication strategy has to come out of a brand strategy. But, but as Mahesh was saying, brand strategy is sort of above marketing. Brand strategies, when well executed, has a lot of potential. I mean, almost always has a lot of potential for marketing people, but it's, it's not a marketing-driven exercise. When it is we very often see that it actually fails because it becomes brand strategy is as, I mean, as the word says, strategy, whereas marketing people very often work in a tactical environment. And, yes. uh, and, and it's not because marketing people are not important or, it, I mean, the tactical level is important. But, but, and again, as Mahesh was saying, how do you do the tactics if you don't know the strategy? So, um, so, so that's why I think uh, uh, well-executed brand strategies are most often than not um, boardroom-level material, and uh, it's, it should have that high priority so that the senior management, when the brand strategy is done, that they take the lead, that they are, so to say, the torch bearers of the brand strategy. Otherwise, it sometimes ends becoming a little uh, just another exercise so in that context uh, once you do a brand workshop and you share the collaterals uh, that are a product of that workshop what would be your recommendation to the company's leadership or the organization's leadership in terms of actually activating uh, what you put on paper what, what would be step one step two in that context brand strategies are many different things a brand strategy for a startup let's say is is uh, is of course different than a brand strategy for a larger company the uh, for a startup a brand strategy is is very often about getting sort of just the basics in place for a more sort of mature organization uh, there are other things in in place for a mature organization sort of with many people i would gather the employees uh, for a town hall meeting and explain what this brand strategy is, why we've done it, and what it means to people and how we'd like them to live by that brand strategy and what initiatives will be taken as per the brand strategy. So that it, it has to be seen as something uh, sort of serious. It's not just a play with, with smart words and um, a nice uh, design. It's business critical. And that needs to be conveyed to the full organization in a sort of a, in a in a proper manner because at the end of the day it's the employees that have to live the values and, of and the branding yeah. exactly yeah exactly Manish, any examples that come to mind on this front in terms of maybe some of the projects that you've done in recent times where the company has actually gone out and implemented your recommendation in a way that's you know truly worthy of a, a conversation i mean i i wouldn't probably say something like a town hall meeting or anything like that but i think uh, Sai Life Sciences, one of our clients in the, over the last few years, has been a great example of trying to implement the thoughts which have arisen out of the strategy phase into a typical work culture. Okay. And also Sai Life Sciences being a kind of a B2B company, and we were doing a lot of work with its employees. It gave okay. us a better reach to 
kind of communicate and talk to the employees in multiple formats. Perhaps can I just add one thing here? Sure, yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've had uh, the pleasure of working with a sort of large uh, industrial client out of Bangalore, and uh, we were supposed to get to have a sort of a, a, a start of workshop, which often is with four to eight people. And um, this organization we've sort of started to getting to know, it uh, was seen as an organization that was sort of very value driven, very people driven. So when we arrived uh, at the uh, workshop, 40 people were there. Oh, wow. So, and, and that, <laughs> that uh, and I didn't know that uh, Mahesh, uh, it was Mahesh and I uh, doing it. So uh, we had to sort of quickly change uh, sort of the format <laughs> of the workshop. But what it showed was that this company and the CEO of the company thought this to be so important that all sort of multiple voices had to be heard and should be included even in the formative process of Absolutely. the brand strategy. So it tells a lot about sort of what kind of company this is. And it, it enabled us to get sort of a sort of, I believe, a very truthful insight into the company and its values and, 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 and why they were doing so good because it was... Uh, truly a people-driven uh, organization. Amazing, amazing. That's actually great to hear. Uh, like Thomas said, I mean, it also kind of motivates us to do better, to kind of challenge ourselves and make sure that, you know, keeping everybody on board. Absolutely, mm. yeah. yeah. And what, what in, in that particular project, what it, it ended up with was um, that, that all of these employees, they had various statements of what this company did for them or for the world. And all of these statements are now uh, put on the uh, manufacturing uh, facilities, on buses, on trucks at the factory, sort of people's wow. own words. So I think that that's a strong example of, of, of what a brand strategy can do if you really take it serious. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a very inspiring example, for sure. So my next question, uh, because I'm a marketing professional, uh, my thinking around brand strategy is always about how do I use this to influence human behavior because while the marketing function is typically considered uh, unfortunately uh, to be a lead generation engine what we are really in the business of is changing how people think so for people in marketing uh, where the job is to influence other people how could i potentially use a brand strategy framework so there are of course different methodologies of doing brand strategy. We have our way. I mean, it, it, it works. <laughs> so according to sort of the way we work, we start off by sort of digging a little deep into sort of, yeah, both the values and the brand personality and, and other traits of, of the brand. And and that we, uh, those uh, words and those um, sort of that essence, if you could call it a brand essence, we will explain in, in words what it means so that it's easy uh, digestible that yeah. it's easy to understand that there should also be a certain emotional connect to it so that it's not just i mean if you just put words like uh, innovation and quality and uh, those kind of sort of a little hard words a little uh, sort of they have no taste to them but mm -hmm. um so so there should be an emotional connect together with rational connect and marketing people i often find um, see this as a great way of expressing the brand in those adverts that has to be done. And that's what I'm, I, I keep repeating myself, that a brand strategy is a management tool. It's the foundation of how shall we guide the world towards seeing our brand as it truthfully is. And, um, and it gives, brand strategy gives marketing people an excellent, excellent tool for briefing advertising agencies uh, and and other people working within sort of the expressions of the brand to what they should do and what they should not do so that the outcome of adverts i mean any form of communication has a direction to it and that's yeah. that's basically the purpose of the brand strategy to give direction if i may add i mean i'm just borrowing one of uh, thomas's lines from the past i remember uh, we always told clients it's it's all about what's on brand and what's not on brand yeah. So if you understand that, then everything else becomes very simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's in that nuance of understanding in a way, because, yeah, uh, yeah we do find that uh, where the brand has really been thought through, 
yeah. and a certain amount of alignment has already taken place yeah. uh, it's easy for us then to position the product it's easy for us to position the service because exactly. we know that we already have buy in from the team that we're supposed to have buy in from and we are all right. working towards the same goal so yeah absolutely and now it's time for the much awaited topical topical is a curious cat who loves being curious obviously guys Thomas and Mahesh, we have some interesting questions for you today. What is your least favorite question that's ever been asked in a strategy workshop? <laughs> my least favorite—I mean, can I? I'll slightly rephrase it. My least favorite thing is when people, when the phone rings and people pick up the phones in the middle of a nice, intensive uh, brand workshop. Then you, yes. then you, then you, then you kind of lost it because it's—I uh, mean, it's it's serious work. So. Uh, I've really wanted to put people's uh, telephones out of that meeting room when we're having the brand workshops. So uh, yeah, I didn't quite answer it, but uh, yeah, I, I hope you. No, get but you point. got it out there, so glad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just needed to get it out of your system. I understand. Yes. No, we had a meeting once with a client, and uh, that was sort of we had to, did done some brand strategy, and we presented the logo. I mean, so that's sometimes what we might do brand strategies alone, and but often we also do the design. Yeah. So, so this uh, esteemed gentleman, he uh, he said, uh, "Can you give me the logo files? I'd like to play around with it." Oh wow! <laughs> um, and, no, and, the answer is no. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it it was a no, and we lost the client. Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, but it says something around the sort of and and I know we as sort of branding and communication people sometimes when people say uh, we'd like to play around with it or or could you play around with something it it gives me a little I I get a little angry because it's I mean this is not play I mean it's hard work it's uh, years of experience it's uh, yeah. years of education yeah. so we don't. Play around, and when we do photo shoots, we don't uh, snap a photo. We make a photography. Sometimes, um, I mean, if if a relationship with a client, it's perceived as being in, as too easy, perhaps. I guess sometimes exactly. It's if it's a photo, people might see it. A photo is a photo. No, it's not. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a visual representation of something. But there's definitely a uh, you can tell a really good photograph so from a, a bad one. Yeah, yeah exactly absolutely. that. Again, that the, the the photography for uh, a brand should should support the brand strategy at the end of the day, and uh, and and give that extra, perhaps uh, sort of emotional touch to it. I know you can delete this later, but Thomas almost beat up that man who asked for the logo file. <laughs> <laughs> If that's okay with you, I'd like to keep it. <laughs> that was a, that was a hard day. It was not easy. To be to be honest, I mean, that all questions are welcome in a brand workshop. So yeah. actually, that's not the problem. But you know, stuff where the whole flow is disturbed is it's just a bit challenging. So, in your experience, what's been the industry that's hardest to do brand strategy for? Is there such a thing? Probably uh, fashion in my world. Fashion. Yeah. Oh, that's because, an interesting answer. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, there are too many similar stories to present, hmm. and then every client thinks that what he's doing is the best, but. obviously they're not able to dig deep into what i actually offering yeah. and sometimes in my mind that that's a pretty challenging industry interesting yeah. right i would have thought it would be b2b but that's actually a very interesting perspective yeah, yeah. we love to do work with a b2b it's like yeah. because it's kind of a little uh, sort of um this they haven't gotten the the love of advertising agencies and marketing people so so they're sort of a a fresh clean sheet to start with so uh, yeah very true but interesting and they they so open and they find it interesting that people like us who run a brand consulting firm have so much happiness working with them Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's quite interesting. And this is a question that you guys can uh, agree on or disagree on and answer independently as well. What, in your opinion, is the most iconic brand in the last fifty years? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, worldwide. Worldwide, yes. Okay, NASA. Wow. Okay. Yeah. they did something i mean it's it's it is many years ago but they uh yeah so uh yeah 
No, I agree because it's it's quite relevant even today. Uh, a lot of H and M T-shirts sell because they have the NASA logo on them, which makes no sense, but it makes perfect mm. sense at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, and 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 just from a sort of a design and branding perspective, is it was interesting that uh, NASA had uh, a new logo done, but they changed back to the original sort of '60s logo that had that ambition of. Uh, we can do anything. We can go to the moon uh, without even knowing how to do it, but we will. So, so yeah. now it's the old logo that uh, NASA is us- using, which also tells a little bit about they had a nice brand strategy working there. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are so many, so many, but I guess uh, just quickly top of the mind, Emirates comes to my mind. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any particular reason why uh, it's I like the way they tell their stories to the world mm-hmm. they're very mm-hmm. subtle it's not on your that's face true. yeah that's true very well done in terms of messaging yeah my last question if you had to pick only one thing on the one hand you have facts and figures and number and logic and on the other you have emotions and feelings and storytelling which one would you pick storytelling Okay. Emotions, feelings, totally. Any day, any day, anytime. Any day, anytime. I totally agree, and and it's because people are not driven by rational rationality. People are driven by emotions and uh, narratives, (laughs) and and we are basically we are in the narrative business. We are storytellers. We help companies tell their stories in the best possible manner to uh, to the various stakeholders that they have. Uh, because that's what we, at the end of the day, that's what sets us apart as, as uh, from animals. We love stories. This is, I mean, anything, uh, if you think about it, politics, religion, I mean, anything is about storytelling. It's about sort of a, a narrative that uh, is compelling and that touches you. So anytime storytelling. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, that actually brings us to the end of Topical and this wonderful <laughs> conversation around brand strategy itself. So thank you so much. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, Mahesh, for being here today and for answering all of my questions on brand strategy. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Asita, for having us. And hope we can talk again soon. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Cognizant Technologies has recently launched both a print and a digital campaign whose tagline is Intuition Engineered. Now, that's just not a campaign. It's also a concept. And on their homepage, they describe it as anticipating trends, driving meaningful change, outthinking your competition. That's the power of intuition, and we can engineer it. A very powerful message if there was one. But while I was coming back from the airport, I saw a print hoarding that said something on the lines of, put something in, get something out, that's intuition engineered. Now, the very fact that I do not even remember what the hoarding said says something about how the campaign did get diluted. And it also makes me think a little bit about the whole head and heart component in brand strategy and marketing in general. Do we spend too much time with the numbers and the facts and the techniques? In recent times, we've had loads of marketing and brand heavyweights come out and talk about making not too big a deal out of the numbers. You know, The senior manager for Global Insights at Lego has explicitly said on a podcast episode, which will be linked in the show notes, that the way to get into people's heads is not with numbers alone. As Thomas said, we are story driven. We are people who believe in stories. Rand Fishkin at Spark Toro caused a little bit of a LinkedIn storm recently when he said, proving marketing attribution isn't actually hard. I just think it's counterproductive. Honestly, I think having worked with Stereo Associates having sat in on their brand workshops and having been responsible for taking that brand strategy and translating it into a GTM, a positioning statement, marketing outcomes, communications, I've realized that there is the storytelling component which is central to every business. And I think it doesn't matter whether you're a B2B company and therefore you have a larger buying committee, you have to use logic, absolutely, by all means. But the fact is that with a good story, you give people something to rally around. And that, in my opinion, is the true power of great brand strategy. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this conversation was insightful. I hope it sparked a lot of questions for you. And if it did, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn profile link is also in the show notes. And let me know what you thought. If you have questions for Thomas and Mahesh, I'd be happy to ask them and answer them for you as well. 
Meanwhile, while you're here, please do rate our podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, give us a follow and leave us a review. Thank you so much. Thank you.